Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, too long since we were together in person, but having us together in one room to do the recording has really ministered to me a lot, and that's one of the things that I'm really thankful for, is each and every one of you. And um, uh, I, I'm going to share um, just a little bit about the things that I am thankful for. Um, but before we do that, uh, I'm going to just read a scripture. Hold on. Glasses. This is 2 Corinthians 2, verses 14 uh, through to 15. But thanks be to God, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one, we are an aroma that brings death, and to the other, an aroma that brings life. Um, I want to read that because I've been thinking about the virus and how it's been increasing um, in and fear is increasing in, in our neighborhood. Um, uh, there's just so much that's repeating. And I've been thinking about um, how I should be thinking about these things. And I am thankful that I'm a carrier of a heavenly virus. That I am an aroma to those who are suffering from fear, from anxiety. And I want to just share with you that I am so absolutely thankful for these past few months. And some of you are looking cross-eyed at me like, oh, you cannot be serious. Well, I am. Because of all the difficulty, because of all the pressure, um, there has been a big change in my heart. And I just want to share with you uh, something that Jesus said in, in John 12, I believe it is. Uh, I think it's 24. And he says, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground, it, it, can't, um, it can't multiply. And like it or not, we actually thrive when we're under pressure. The pressure of a seed in the soil, the ground pressing in it, the, the hardness of that. There's something germinating on the inside of that seed. And that pressure is actually what causes new life to grow. And that's been my experience in the last few months. And... Um, the changes began to happen, um, not just because of the physical changes, but the Father began to speak to us about himself. And we thought that he was, he was going to just talk to us about his fatherly heart, and then we were going to move on and talk about other things. But as you know, he began talking about himself every single time that we gathered. And I began to realize, wait a minute, nobody can come to the Father unless he draws them. And how privileged we were being as a church family that the Father was wanting to talk to us. He's wanting to reveal his heart. And so we started leaning in like, Oh, uh, yes, Daddy, what, what do you want to do? What are the changes that, that you're wanting to make? And um, I have had such a major shift. And in order uh, to share that, I just, I just want to say that during lockdown, I became very aware that I was living in my father's house. 
um, he was talking about the fact that, you know, we were even doing online services in the father's living room. And so we were giving names to the different aspects um, of, of, the, of the services, and this was the father's room and so on. Well, um, I have some really, or I had some really bad neighbors. And I'm going to tell you about my neighbors. Whenever I started singing joyfully in my father's house, there'd be a knock on the door, and one of these neighbors would say, you're too loud, can you keep it down? Or, oh, how self-righteous you are. And, um, and I would quickly shut it down. Okay, you say, well, what, what kind of neighbors are those that you should move? Well, the neighbors that live close to me were self-loathing, self-condemnation, accusation. Um, they didn't live in my house, but they were my neighbors. And so when I started to exercise and begin to worship and draw close to God and enjoy him, suddenly something is saying, shut up. Okay. Does anybody relate to this? Well, um, while I am having uh, this revelation of the Father's heart, just how much he loves me, fear is leaving. Fear used to also knock on my door. They live on the other side. Anxiety and fear and, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? And, and, and uh, I began to notice that Jesus was the one going to the door now, not me. And do you know what he did? He gave fear and anxiety an eviction notice. He said, get out. Yes. And condemnation, get out. You are no longer allowed in close proximity to my daughter, to my son. And Jesus... Uh, then would go and stand in the different places where I had experienced condemnation or self-doubt, standing in front of a mirror or holding a microphone, where I would hear things that would make me feel insecure or self-conscious. And the whole thing about having neighbors like that or voices around you is that you cannot be who you really are created to be. You don't feel like you have a voice. You don't feel like you have anything to share. But with the eviction notices, now when my father's talking, I can just revel in his pleasure of me. And he can revel in my pleasure of him. And the delight and the joyfulness of belonging and enjoying each other and if I wake up one day and I go and I look in the mirror and I, and I see something I don't like looking back at me, you know who talks to me now? Jesus. He goes, You're, you, you can trust me. I'm your beauty. I'm your beauty. Or if I wake up and I don't have enough strength, I feel emotionally drained. He goes, I'm your strength. I am. I'm going to give you me. I'm going to give you part of my flesh. And, and I want you to, to know me experientially in this way. And if I, if I start feeling like I, I'm agreeing with the accuser or the condemn, condemnation starts to set in, he says, uh, 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 I'm your righteousness. And he starts to clap and rejoice. And so my eyes are being taken off of myself and what I'm not. And I'm getting preoccupied with the beauty of living with my Father, with living with Jesus, being filled in the, with the Spirit every morning. Uh, every morning when I wake up, I'm, I'm so aware of the Holy Spirit hovering over me, and I'm like, 
Don't just be on me. Be in me. Fill me. Set us on fire. Lord, let the aroma that I have in my home just seep out of this, down the corridors, into the streets. I'm looking forward to going for groceries. I'm looking forward for opportunities to go places where I get to be with people. And they're, of course, shrinking back. But I have an aroma. And to those who are hopeful, or have lost hope, pardon me, to those who are perishing, I become an aroma. When I'm doing my laundry, I've had the most amazing conversations with people. Last week, someone said, I'm so glad that you want to talk about God, because I want to talk about God, but I don't know who to talk to. And I thought at first, because accusation said, well, you shouldn't be forcing your beliefs on anybody. Who's forcing? Jesus wants to reveal himself. And, and his living words will be, will be tumbling out of our lips if we're speaking the truth in love. Not telling people they're going to hell, but encouraging them to meet the God of heaven so that he can reveal himself to each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Whew. I love him. I absolutely love him. I've discovered that my father has the best sense of humor. You know, I've spent so much time over the last few months laughing. Well, I'm living with Ramesh. Yeah. But he, re he, like father, like son. There's a lightheartedness. There's a playfulness about my father. He doesn't let me get too serious. And in fact, uh, if strife tries to knock on the door, he'll just start talking about my hubby. Yeah, and oh, ooh, you don't mess with my son. You don't mess with my daughter. I know my daddy protects me and loves me and cherishes me. And he certainly does the same for my hubby. But he does it, he, he goes even beyond that. And my father, I'm just so thankful that I, that I have a father who loves to talk about everybody around me. He's been talking about my family. And he's been saying, have no doubt. I can reach into your family's lives and reveal myself. You just believe me. If we are carrying doubts, they need an eviction notice. Come on. Because he is in love with our families way more than we could. And he's well capable of moving in their lives. And what is he required of us? To love. To believe him. To keep on laying down our lives. Like Jesus said. Unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies. Well, how do we love? We give our lives away. That's, it's easy for me to say that. It's not as easy to live it out. But in this season... Where we've been locked down, he has been going after that, after the self-life. Anything that would, would uh, tarnish that message of love that is burning, burning, burning in his heart. He wants to reach out into every sector of our lives, not just our city, but... He, but let me tell you, we, we were talking last week about um, being seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers, learning to rule and reign. Well, where, is, where does that come down to the rubber meets the road? It's how you love, how you, how you reveal Jesus through your life. Are you an aroma or are you? Are you a stench? I don't ever want to be a stench. The only people I'm a stench to are the religious. And, and 
if I start getting religious, boy, I can take offense at just about anything. And so what does he do? He takes me to the carpet. He says, get rid of that. Get rid of that. I'm here to love. And um, that brings me to a very, very important part of ruling and reigning. If we want him to rule and reign through us, then we're going to have to enjoy our prayer life. Praying without ceasing is an invitation to be with him day in, day out, and share his thoughts and his feelings. It is not going through a list and making sure you spent this amount of time, no less, no more. Prayer is the joy. Prayer and communion with him is, is ruling and reigning in heavenly places. I've gone to so many countries with him. I have flown without airplanes. I have been able to be dropped down in countries and see things and hear things and pray for people that I don't even know. And someday I'll find out that that was a life-changing experience where someone needed prayer. There is so much excitement out there. So much that we can do when we're invited to pray. Let me tell you, our attitudes, having a different attitude, like Joshua and Caleb, where we, we have a different spirit about things, where we're not conforming to the way that the world uh, perceives government. We're asked and invited by God himself to pray for our government. To pray for our leaders. If you've ever had to lead something, you know that one of the most crushing things that, that can happen is if you hear criticism. Or something, if you're accused of something. It is, a, it is an awful thing to live under that. And we have been invited to come like love agents. And to minister into those places, to break those curses off of our leaders. We don't have to like what they're doing or anything, but we pray for them. And we pray that they'll have God encounters, that they'll, they'll know the Lord in the middle of the night. And that with the broken pieces of their hearts where nobody else sees it but God. And he's going to hold us to the fire. How did you love your leaders? How did you take care of your governments? And we are being invited to rule and reign with him. He is a God of all compassion, slow to anger. Not me. I can get my dander up in a minute. I can be so mad so fast at government. Yeah. And other things. But you know what? I've got to come back to my senses and come back to that place of surrender to him. That place of thanksgiving. And you think, this is a very strange thanksgiving message. Well, there's more. I want to talk about surrender. Just briefly. Um, thanksgiving reveals a humble heart. If you say thank you to somebody, you have said, I receive. Or I have needed or wanted what you gave me. And when, when they say thank you. That is a humble place. That is a beautiful place. That is a place of surrender. And this COVID season has been a place for me to learn thanksgiving. To, to step into that invitation to surrender back to the Lord. Um, the passage that comes to mind is the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And there are uh, two people there that surrendered that I want to highlight. And the first one was the little boy with the five loaves and the two fishes. Remember him? Jesus said, guys, we're going to feed this crowd. And they go, there's only a little boy here with five loaves and two fishes. 
what is amazing to me is that um, he gave them his lunch. A hungry boy. Don't take a hungry boy's meal. But um, he gave that. And I know that we think like that. We think, I've only got a little bit. And there's just so much to do. How can I be a part of something so grandiose? But it's the second part that is God's part. And that is Jesus came and showed us by example what to do with what we have, what we give him. Now, uh, Jesus took that those loaves and fishes, and what did he do? He surrendered it back to the Father. He showed us what to do. See, Jesus didn't do anything without the Father directing him. So this was the Father's heart. So Jesus surrendered, and it is in that surrender that the miracle began to happen. And what did Jesus do? He got his guys to get 5,000 people sitting in groups of 50. That's a miracle right there. And every one of those little communities were fed. The Lord's been talking to me about this. That this is the place of thanking him beforehand. Before we see the provision. He's inviting us to come together in little groups. And he's going to feed us. He is going to do the most phenomenal things in our midst. Because we're surrendering to him. We're listening to him. And Jesus set the example for us. In giving thanks. And I, I really believe that, that during this time, we of all people have the most to be thankful about and for. And he wants us to be a radiant bride, so full of his spirit, so aware of the Father's love for us, so secure in that, that we're able to rise up as sons and daughters of the Most High God, and his aroma is going to go everywhere where we go. We are going to be carriers of the kingdom of God and infect everybody. Anybody up for that? Amen. And so I just want to give the invitation that if you want to surrender, this is him tapping on your heart. Surrender is the way to live. You give him your life he gives you his life. That's a pretty good deal. And surrendering is, uh, is just like that little boy. You give him your little bits and watch it grow. Our time, our talents, our treasures. You know, some people just cannot imagine surrendering their treasures. They're so afraid that God's going to take their life and... Can I just say right off the bat, he will. He will take your life. But he'll give you his life. And it's so, so much better than anything that we could ever ask or imagine. And surrender is the best and the only way to come into the kingdom of God. Give him your heart. That's what he's really after. We, in giving us or giving him our time, our talents, and our treasures. We are giving him our hearts. And today, let's just do that in abandonment. Amen? Bless you. Oh, yes. Um, stay tuned for the Zoom. We love hanging out together with... The, the Thanksgiving videos are going to be released now. Hi everyone, this Hello. is Yanis and Joan Fotopoulos. We just wanted to say how thankful we are to God for this amazing year that we've been having. Um, Yanis has had the best year he's oh, ever garden. had yeah. in his garden. Bountiful harvest. 
I also have to thank God for Pastor Ramesh and Elsie for uh, keeping us all together, keeping us in community, um, motivating us to pray for each other. I thank you, Rosemary, for my prayer partner, my connect group. And uh, I think one of the key things, too, is that during this time is of sitting with the Lord that he's encouraged me to go professional with my art. So I've actually started that process. And I just wanted to bless everyone and God thank bless. you so much. Love you, and we miss seeing you in person. Bye-bye yes, so for now. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. What are you thankful for, Elijah? Um, my mom and dad. Oh, wow. I'm thankful for my house. I'm thankful, I'm thankful for God. <laughs> I'm thankful for my salvation. And I'm thankful for Canada and for my work permit. Everyone, happy Thanksgiving. I am thankful to the Lord for so many things, for everything He has done for us and for everything He has given us. Um, I am thankful for my family um, that I get to spend so much time with Jean, Livian, and Emiana and Vivian. I'm thankful that we got to we, we get to teach them and the way of the Lord, not only knowledge. I'm thankful for all the possession that God gave us. I'm thankful that um, me and my family were all safe. And um, I'm also hopeful that we will be together. Thankful was well, thankful in the in spirit and heart right now, virtually, but I'm very hopeful that very quickly and very soon we'll be together and we'll be thankful together that we'll be a spend time we'll be able to spend time with each other in the lord that we'll be able to gather together and really have a great time with god bye good night morning catch the fire i am thankful and really grateful for um just this journey God has put me in and having to be able to come to a lovely church like Catch the Fire Scarborough and getting to know um, the people that I've come to know. Um, it's been such a blessing to me on this journey, uh, all of 2019, uh, having to come even in this place when we're uh, doing virtual services. I still feel a part of the family and I'm so, so grateful for my Catch the Fire family. I'm so thankful and grateful for my family. I'm so grateful um, for life, for work, for good health. Uh, by God's grace, this year has honestly, as many as people would say that this wasn't a great, great year for me it, it's been awesome in the sense that I have just grown so much um, getting to be comfortable in myself uh, through God and I'm just grateful grateful for the experiences that he's brought my way and that I get to enjoy it with a beautiful beautiful family like Catch the Fire Scarpo so thank you hi guys it's Kevin here um, just wanted to say um, I am thankful uh, for what this pandemic has opened us up to, uh, these online communities. Basically, my pod of uh, Sean and Jeremy, I am thankful for the friendship that Sean and Jeremy and I have cultivated. And uh, I really appreciate them, and I'm so thankful for what uh, we are taking part in with Never Quit. Anyway, thanks to Jeremy and Sean. See you guys, and God bless you on this Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. This Thanksgiving, I just want to publicly give thanks to the Lord for what you may think is very mundane. I have a roof over my head. I have food on the table. I have clothes on my back. I have a warm shower in the morning when I, when I take a shower. 
So I'm very grateful even in this season or especially in this season for these basic things. I'm also thankful to the Lord for a wonderful church, wonderful friends, wonderful colleagues to work alongside with to bring the kingdom of God. And most of all, I'm thankful that my wife still loves me even though I have a COVID belly. Bless you, everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel. Sean. And we just wanted to come on here quickly and just say what we're thankful for. So I know for me, uh, I'm really thankful, especially during this season, for my health and uh, for God's keeping power. And I'm really thankful for my power group uh, this year. Uh, it's been really encouraging and something to look forward to every week. So super thankful uh, for the guys in that and the opportunity to meet. Yeah, and we're just really thankful to be a part of uh, this church community and we're thankful for each one of you so we just want to wish you a happy thanksgiving and we just wanted to bless you with that bye happy thanksgiving i'm grateful for so many things um of course my family my husband and my children um and lately i've been especially thankful for the body of christ and how we are all made so unique and he has put gifts and talents in each of us that contribute to the body so that we can work together to create beautiful things. Um, and one of those beautiful things that I have been thinking about a lot is actually our church service. I am so grateful for everyone who contributes to our church service being made. Um, the whole production team, not just those on camera. So thank you to everyone who's been doing that. We know that we, you have been faithful and working tirelessly. So we're grateful for you. Hey everyone. So some of the things I'm thankful for would be for my family and for friends and for all kinds of people God's put in my life. And many of you are among them, so thank you. I'm thankful for CTFS and for how God saved me when I was a little kid and is helping me get to be, uh, know him better now as my loving Heavenly Father, especially over the last number of years. I'm thankful for how God's been with me throughout my life and the various ways he showed up, especially when I needed it. I'm thankful for his manifest presence and for his voice and how he's spoken into my life. I'm thankful for the hope and the future God gives me for his good plans for me, his promises, and for his faithfulness. Now, let's spend in a minute, so that's the beginning. Hello everyone, I wanted to share what I am thankful for. Here we go. I am thankful for salvation, thankful for his love, thankful for God's mercy coming from above, thankful for his kindness, thankful for his grace, Thankful for relationships soon to see his face. I am thankful for his sacrifice. Thankful for his blood. Thankful for his willingness. Oh, that cleansing flood. Thankful for the peace I have. Thankful God is real. Thankful I can worship him. This no one can steal. I am Thankful for his mighty power. Thankful he's so strong. Thankful I can trust his ways. God is never wrong. Thankful I can speak with him. Thankful he speaks back. Thankful that he calls me friend. I will never lack. I am thankful I can call him father. Thankful I'm his kid. Thankful he's adopted me. So grateful that he did. Happy Thanksgiving. Scarborough Catch the Fire. I am so excited to be here just sharing the goodness of God with you on this Thanksgiving Sunday. It's not the Sunday, but today, any day is Thanksgiving Day. So I just thank you, God. I thank you for what you're doing in my life, for the favor and the pleasures and the light that I'm having in you. I thank you for the prayer walkers, God, and just for how you're manifesting and showing yourself and revealing yourself to us. What a delight that is. And to know your heart and to know that you love us and so intently and so deeply, I just give you praise and thanksgiving for all that, for my health, despite all this COVID stuff. 
and for my job. I give you Thanksgiving for all these gracious things to you. And even over the Thanksgiving weekend, the pleasure of being given a cottage. God, you're so good in my life. And I give you thanks and adoration. I, I, I just exalt your name. Amen. Okay, guys. What are you thankful to God for, Michaela? Um, family. What are you thankful to God for, Mary? I'm thankful to God for his love and just his kindness of us this year. Just his smile of us um, as a family. And um, I've also been praying um, for this job um, for a long time. And I'm thankful to God that I got it this year, even um, during the pandemic. Um, I'm really grateful for that. Love more. I'm thankful to God for a healthy family. I'm thankful for divine health, for his favor of our lives. I'm thankful to God for his provision every little step of the way. I'm thankful to God even for my family, for my parents uh, who are doing well and healthy. And I'm thankful to God even for an opportunity to get to work with awesome people at work. And yeah, even just for an opportunity to dream about 2021 oh. and what might be coming. I'm thankful to God that we get to celebrate Christmas this year. <laughs> And then you get to put a tree in the house. Well, we want to say thank you uh, to the entire team that comes together on Friday nights uh, to put the online services together. Thank you, Sybil, for overseeing the worship and the audio visual. Thank you, Michelle, for letting us have so much of your husband's time. We want to thank the worship team and all that you put into it. Sybil, David, Brian, Marilyn, Roshan, and Ashwini. We want to thank the hosts, Kyan and Rachel, Sybil, Joy, Rachel Mangle, and Lovemore. Uh, we want to thank you, Ian Ross, for bringing the Father Heart message to us and for your prayers. We want to thank Jeffy and Sherlyn uh, for producing our segments with so much passion and devotion. And you're not only overseeing the production and editing, but you're also raising up others like Carl Brady and Joel and Jeremy, Shabani, Pratab, and Kyan. Uh, thank you, everyone who has come together uh, and prayed for us, uh, whether it's on site or off site. Thank you so much, Catch the Fire Toronto, for the use of the prayer chapel. Uh, bless you guys. We look forward. Uh, to being together on Sunday mornings. Hi, my name is Sean, and I'm thankful for my parents and my baby brother, and Jesus will bless you. Hey guys, my name is Michelle, and this is Mark. I'm thankful to God for his continuous protection, and also for both my sons, Sean and Mark. Hey, I'm Sibu. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm really thankful for is, uh, is is ongoing protection as well as, you know, my jobs at this time. So I just want to be thankful for the job that God has given us, um, continue just to be excellent in what we do. Um, and also I'm thankful for our church community that is around us, surrounded by pastors, the worship team, uh, the outreach team, the technical team, everybody that is amazing. So I just wanted to say thank you and bless you and love you all. I wish I could. I'm hugging you right now. Bye. Hi, we're the Locks, and we're thankful for... The doggies! My family. For such an amazing year, and um, just the beautiful fall leaves and stuff. I'm thankful for beauty, and I have been forgiven so much. I'm also thankful for beauty that we can find in God's creation every day it shows us his faithfulness and his love and his um, provision i'm so thankful for trees and turning leaves and all that we can find in creation 